Day three of Hercules week, and it is high time that we paid a visit to the doctor. Our appointment for today is with Dr. Crank. If you couldn't tell, he's a crane truck. Yeah, I'm sure so many needed that pointed out, but there you go. What I do want to point out about the crane truck, however, is he's got a very big cab section compared to all the others we've reviewed so far. So this one might not be in scale. But I never cared for scale. I care for detail. Let's look at the detail here. Speaking of that cab section, you can see that the door even has a little tiny dab of paint for the door handle. That's an amazingly tiny detail to include that they really didn't have to. Might be a dab of paint. Like, no, intentional. Aha. Some turn signals have been painted on. And over here on the side, a little bit of silver on the vent. Moving over to the top, we can see some extra panels molded in. Very nicely painted on both sides. On toward the back. You can start to see some of the transformation hinges and some of the connection points that we'll be using later on in this uh, later on in this week. Can, there's actually a ton on this guy. You can see here, 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 and you know what? The story is the same on the other side. Actually, you've got four of them on this side. Oh, man. And here's the dirty little secret of this toy. We're not going to be using all of them. As far as I can tell, some of these are put in here just to make the toy as symmetrical as possible so it looks cleaner. I freaking love this fan group. Let's look at the crane arm because that's a pretty unignorable feature here. Got a lot of nice silver paint apps going all the way up. Again, painted cable lines going all the way to the front. And speaking of the front, some hazard stripes. Imagine, three construction vehicles so far. Those are our first hazard stripes of any kind. There are some oddball details I do want to point out, however. The first being the random translucent red cab section. It's a little out of place. It looks cool, but, um, yeah, I'm not sure why all the other windows were black and those were red. Little odd. And the other one, uh, I will raise the arm so you can notice the same thing I have noticed. Yeah, what do you think that huge hunk of translucent red and black plastic is sitting in the middle? You know, the one with a hinge conspicuously hanging off of it. I'll give you a hint. You really can't complain about Energon Ironhide's exposed head anymore. And that's really all I want to talk about the actual truck. I want to talk about this crane arm because there is some amazing level of detail going into it. For starters, well, you have to pull the little handle off here. But you've got the strut supports here, or whatever they're called, I'm not an expert. They can fold down to the back all the way. You can also do this, which of course it wouldn't be a crane truck if you couldn't extend the crane arm. Not once, but twice! Look at this, I, I can't even fit this whole thing on camera. This, this is a massive 15 inch accessory. I mean, this probably ranks in as one of the largest accessories I've ever seen on, well, any toy I own. Aside from that, the entire thing can rotate around. It's on a peg that allows free movement there. And, as uh, you probably noticed already, it can be raised up. And you do have the fake hydraulics moving up with it to give it a little bit of energy and life. It can actually move quite high completely vertical as a matter of fact. One interesting thing about this too, you'll notice this little piece I removed. I can plug it back in here and actually what this forms is a crank lever. You see? And you can even see a little hole inside that spindle. You can see little guide loops through the rest of the crane arm. You can see all these little individual gears and pulley mechanisms. This comes off and if I hang it down here, you can tell it's a hook. This thing is made for a string. Why it doesn't have one, I don't know. But if you do take the time to actually thread some kind of string or, any, well, whatever would fit there. If you actually take the time to do it and know how to actually get it on there correctly, this thing would also have a fully working crane. You also have the accessory weapons. These are actually quite like the design of, by the way. Nice. 
And you've got a ton of uh, points where you can position these. You can position them here in the front, which is pretty typical. You also have connection points in the back where they can go, or here to add to the mechanisms of the crane arm itself. Or if you want to be weird again, you can do like I do, and you can equip Dr. Crank with bumper cannons. Not as epic as a jet-powered dump truck, but I will take what I can get. Because, you know, the thing this guy needs is more forward wep weaponry. Yeah. Anyway, that's a crane truck, and that is a really, really fine vehicle. I mean, between how cool the crane arm is, and this is by far the most modular figure in vehicle mode for the weapons. All around very cool. But can the robot mode match it? Behold Dr. Crank in robot mode, looking very sleek and slender compared to the heavy labor that we just looked at yesterday. Now, as you probably noticed, his transformation is actually very, very simple. However, the heel spurs, I will tell you, can be a pain to get out. One of them was just... One of them required Herculean strength to remove. But a bump ching. you also notice I left this out. We will get to that in a bit. For now, I want to leave this toy unobstructed so we can look at the details a little bit easier. First, with the head. Oh, he's a grumpy little guy, isn't he? Uh, two red eyes. Forehead thing. They all have forehead things. I don't know what the forehead things are. We move down to the chest. Nice silver paint app, breaking up the silver. I really like the details in the midsection. You know, that does remind me of early Transformers with a lot of broken up details and a lot of different colors and shapes going on. Uh, you got some gearing that has been painted silver, a few rivets to go with it as well. A lot of it is carried over from the vehicle mode as well, including the fact that he has no foot on his right leg and a big red translucent foot on his left. I can show you some extra detailing too. There's his fist fully painted in the same gunmetal gray that most of the black looking plastic is cast in here. Some extra silver on his arms to break up the green and a little bit of the gunmetal gray right there on the shoulders around the screw. This all very nice. He is very nicely detailed. I do quite enjoy him. Now, as you can see, absolutely no backpack on him yet because we still have that freaking crane arm to deal with now, don't we? We'll get there, we'll get there. Now before I get to articulation, I will show you this is the official way that the instructions tell you. This is how you're supposed to transform his shoulders to leave as much of that green exposed as possible. Make his shoulders look nice and strong. Uh, this also means his shoulder articulation is for crap. So, you know what? Screw it. Just leave it forward. Yeah, you're not going to see as much of the shoulder, but the shoulder will actually work. Now onto proper articulation demonstration. You can see the head does rotate just like you saw in the transformation steps. The transformation hinges on the shoulders do allow some extra posing as well as forward shoulder movement, outward shoulder movement, and a bicep swivel. All very appreciated. You've got the elbow joint. Again, it's floating. No wrist swivel this time either. No waist either because of that huge freaking head buried in the lower back. Nice clicky joints there. Nice ratcheted joints. Oh, listen to that. That is solid ratcheting. Nice universal hip joints. Swivel just above the knee. And knee bends quite well. That's pretty much it for the articulation. You can see that they actually did take some extra design steps to make him a little bit more interesting though, especially there with the front of the cab folding up for knee guards. It does make him a little bit different. It gives him a different aesthetic. 
though I think the big feature aesthetically for him is the massive number of wheels exposed on him. This guy is a tire rack. A tire rack we can add guns to. Now, the holes over here from the vehicle mode still work if you want to store them on his legs. Nah. We want to give him heavy artillery. Let him go double barreled. Now, yeah, it's that time. It's that time we have to speak of this. The massive crane arm. There's actually several options to deal with this. For instance, the main one, of course, is to put it the way it has it in the, uh, in the artwork. We're just to pose it he here over his shoulder. And you basically have a massive battering ram weapon over his shoulder. Uh, you can see, no balance issue whatsoever despite this absolutely massive hunk of plastic hanging there. I am completely impressed considering, you know, he barely has any feet to speak of. Now, you can also leave it pegged onto his back. Technically, you don't even have to remove this for transformation. But, in order to do that, you have to leave it slanted like this, or else it won't, uh, or else it won't clear the ground. There we go. See, it's got to stick out like that, unfortunately, if you leave it on his back. So, yeah, this is the unfortunate part of this crane arm. It is so good in vehicle mode, and I love all the tricks it can do, and the potential tricks it can do if you have a string and a lot of patience. However, uh, in dealing with it in this mode, it does get a little bit uh, does get a little bit irritating. Now, I will say this piece on the base actually rotates independently, and there's only one peg, so there are different heights you can adjust it to for different purposes or if you just need to get balance on this toy. Though the crane arm does make for a rather cumbersome backpack, this is the traditional way a transforming robot toy handles such a problem, as demonstrated by this official Hasbro release, which in no way has anything to do with the TFC Toys Dr. Crank. You can tell because the color's different. Now, you can see they actually did have some of the similar design ideas. A lot of wheels are exposed on both of them, and they do pretty much have the same similar layout. You can tell by the extra cab section on both of their left feet. However, very different head on hook here. So, can't say it's an exact copy now, can I? With the crane arm attached, you can also go over the shoulder double cannons. Which, honestly, I kind of like this better than the double pistols. It is a little bit different from the others so far, isn't it? The Good Doctor here ends up somewhere in the middle of range of this set. He has what is probably the best vehicle mode between how versatile its weapon placement is and, of course, all the tricks in the crane arm itself. However, his articulation is limited because he will be forming the chest of Hercules. Again, you'll see that at the end of the week. There's also the matter of how simple his transformation is, but whether that is a plus or minus, is entirely depending on your own preferences. All in all, great figure, but for the Hercules team, just good. Because we have better toys to get to. We're only halfway through, so tune in tomorrow. Who knows, we might get to my favorite one yet.